Okay. Um, I'm on the uh, ice park loop, and I saw three conifers. That one, and then that one, all in the same area, right next to each other. And I thought I'd uh, talk about them a little bit. But this is uh, Abies lasiocarpa. As I said, albine fir. Um, it is uh, found well from Alaska all the way down into here in in Colorado in the high elevation areas. Um, uh, and like most abs, it's got cones that occur usually at the top and they break up. I really haven't seen a lot of cones, so I've been thinking about this as being a Douglas fir because the um, uh, local Douglas fir is Pseudosigum and ZZ variety Glaucum. And this is definitely Glaucus. Um, but anyway, you can see the um, root bark tends to be smoother than most. Um, and the cones tend to be up there, but not necessarily in something this young. Um, this is very glaucous, but uh, let me go into the Douglas fir here. You can see the how much larger the needles are. So this is Pseudosuga menzizii variety glauca. Um, pretty common. The cones hold together, they don't break up like this. And then they have little bracts, little three-fingered bracts that fold up. Um, and I should have grabbed the cone. There's some... There's some, well, not good cones. But anyway, Rocky Mountain Douglas fir. Um, normally the bracts at the very end are more red. Um, but anyway, not so much here. And this tends to be fairly mangy as far as um, other forms go. And then the one in the middle here is either Picea inglebinii or Picea uh, pungens. And I'm going to say pungens. It, the difference is the cones. You know, are they closer to two inches? Are they less? Um, so pungens is the... Um, um, uh, state tree of Colorado. But anyway, the difference here is that uh, these needles will stick you um, if you come on them uh, directly. And then you can see the this is the result of a pest uh, that is corrupting the, uh, the growing shoot and causing that. So, um, but anyway, you can see a very very blue, very pungent, or um, blockus. Um, that comes off a little bit. You can see that. So anyway, subalpine sub fir. Um, the um, Colorado blue spruce and the Col um, Rocky Mountain Douglas fir. So all in the same area. And that's because we're at like 8,500 feet. Um, and so this is a very mixed coniferous forest. And I'm gonna say, you can see the big, big needles. Um, and if that isn't enough, actually that's probably an Anglominii right there. So not not as glaucous, but you can see the, the bark is a little bit smoother than in some here. And this is nice and smooth bark on the young one. Um, but shoot, we also have um, the Rocky Mountain um, uh, ponderosa pine, Pinus ponderosa, ponderosa meaning large. Uh, so this is a, uh, these mountains in southwestern Colorado are kind of a refuge for a lot of coniferous trees. So, um, that's an example, and that's interesting to find. Oh, and if that isn't enough, also got the Rocky Mountain um, um, juniper. Uh, Sabina is what it's been put into, not necessarily juniper, junipera. Um, and we 
the true juniper is the uh, communis, juniper communis, and it's a variety that's found in um, North America. Uh, there is another variety found in Eurasia, and um, up in the, uh, the rockier parts up here, we actually have the Utah juniper, so this is a little bit more um, stretched out. So forth. So quite a quite a few conifers in the area, um, and it's just amazing to find two, you know, Ingleminii, Piscea Ingleminii, Ingleminii, and um, pungents in the same area. They're two species, so you'd think they'd segregate more. But um, I think the because we're in a little river valley, that um, it actually keeps this area a little bit colder, so. Um, are cooler, maybe more accurate, and that allows um, some of these more high elevation, and we're talking, you know, 11,000 feet, um, being a high elevation, 12,000 feet is about the tree line here, um, managed to survive, and um, I think a big part of that is the amount of uh, the water, the cooler temperatures keep the water here versus evaporating and so anyway some of the conifers in this area 